start with the recording. So, uh, uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever mm -hmm. time zone you are in. Uh, it's <laughs> nice to have you. My name is Alexander Herzeg, and I am the tech guy uh, for this meeting. Uh, so, welcome uh, again to the meeting, uh, uh, Artificial Intelligence Tools, a Wealth of Intelligence and Nothing Artificial. Seniors 55 plus using uh -huh. artificial intelligence tools, lesson learned, and best practices exchange. Uh, today, we will have five presenters, and afterwards, we will have a discussion. So I'll just first the name, uh, I will name the presenters. So first is Dr. Luigi Campanella. The second one will be Dr. Uh, Jose Grichar. Third one, Liz Miller. Fourth one, uh, Dr. Daniel Rebol. And the fifth and last but not least, uh, Dr. <laughs> Richard Hackathorn. So this is the order. And then uh, I kindly ask uh, first Dr. Luigi Campanella to give us short presentation on the topic AI helps AI tools helping third age citizens in their normal activities and retired and emeriti professors in transmitting their expertise and professional experience. Luigi, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alexander. I am very happy to see here new friends uh, so that I, we can know them uh, by uh, online. But in any case, uh, this is a marker of our increasing activity. And this is uh, for us maybe uh, the best uh, recognition of our, of our work, especially by Josen and, and myself. The in, artificial intelligence is a very hot topic and uh, all the, over all the world, uh, you can find uh, daily uh, articles uh, about uh, this uh, and this interaction with the day of our uh, normal, uh, with the life of, of our normal days. I mean that is inside our activities during the normal life in our cities and in our uh, countries. I have uh, published a, a paper before this meeting and uh, with the, the help of, of uh, Joseph, we publish that it so that I cannot and I don't want to repeat what I have there written uh, is uh, on website of our network so you can read it uh, when you want and in any case if you wish to have it you have not till now I can mail the file uh, when you request it. So you can send me a request to my email address and I can send you the file of this short article about intelligence, uh, about artificial intelligence. Anyway, here I want to recall some of the points and then to make an addition to what I have already written. The advantages of artificial intelligence uh, becomes from the fact that they are technologies that want to help men. And uh, a, when man is old, this help and this aid is uh, more needed and more necessary. So when we think about the advantage of uh, artificial intelligence on our life, if we look at the third age uh, of uh, our life, we can understand that this help is uh, more significant. So we have that is able to protect our health care. Uh, now telemedicine is become uh, in Europe especially, but I imagine also in Australia and in the United States, uh, a very new 
field of medicine, uh, especially the allowing the, the control of health in the case of uh, old people that cannot be always able to move from their homes to the medicine labs. And so if they can be controlled and monitored just during their life where they are, this is the best solution. So telemedicine and healthcare protection of against the pathologies and viruses are some of the application in the medical field. Then you have also important application in the case of the, of the smart home technologies that now can help us to normal practice and expert expertise of the common uh, contacts with the administration and public policy. We have also the important aspect of the uh, reduction of the insulation feelings to have uh, a, a, a contact outside continuous is able to give to our life a, a, a capability to to less uh, to be less uh, insulated we have also the detection <clears throat> of we have also the financial plans that can be realized and uh, so uh, advised to us we have the management of the free time. We have the safe mobility that is very important because safe mobility means freedom. And the freedom, I think, is the most important uh, character of our life. So as you can imagine and you can see, there are a lot of advantages. There is also an, an indirect advantage that is the support to silver economy. Silver economy is not uh, the economy of silver people, but silver economy is an economy in the countries that is able to help also the old people. In any case, the advantage of a silver economy is diffused, and so also all people have it. So as you see, many advantages, but uh, artificial intelligence, like many things in our life, look as a medal with two faces. So we have another face of the artificial intelligence that is not so good. Which ones are they? We must renounce to privacy. We must renounce to some technologies if we are not educated to them. So the need to be educated to these new technologies. The new technologies based on the digitalization of our society, need new instruments. But these instruments are created by spending energy. So we have that in order to make possible all these advantages of the good face of the metal, we have to spend the energy. And so some of the goals of the, of the artificial intelligence are fighted by its agent to produce new instruments, which uh, are born basing on this want to be, but the instrument by which it is realized 
spend a simple uh, consideration about energy, we see the two faces of uh, artificial intelligence. Finally, there is the ethics aspect, because uh, intelligence, artificial intelligence, means to use it, but to use it can be in contrast with normal ethical points. And this is uh, all the Greek have uh, uh, teached us what does it mean, ethics. Ethics is the science of the behavior. Each one of us is able to behave uh, when is go to make a choice, but at the moment of the choice, the ethical aspects becomes fundamental. So, in the case of, of uh, artificial intelligence, there's so many possibilities that we have to use it, put us be, before choices as to use it, as to exploit the good face of the medal and not have the bad face of the medal. This is, a, is an ethical point. An ethical point are inside the use of artificial intelligence. So as you see, a very complex matter where we have some points discussed many times, but other hidden that we don't uh, have as focus points, but that I suggest we must, uh, uh, on the contrary, consider if we want to have a complete picture of what uh, artificial intelligence means. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Luigi. Very interesting uh, viewpoints on the AI. Uh, I would like now to call the second presenter, Dr. Jorge Gritscher, with the topic Opportunities to Leverage Large Investments in AI Tools and Documents Digitalization. Jorge, floor is yours. Uh, Jorge, you are muted. I would like to address four points of what we are learning about importance of using the tools of artificial intelligence for the seniors, for retired people, for our colleagues. Of course, it's important for everybody, but we can and have to help our age group as well. When we talk about artificial intelligence, we learn that it is okay to speak about the tools. Because artificial intelligence, as a general term, is something very big. Some people are shy of that. They run away. They say, not for me. This is for the scientists. This is something I don't believe will ever happen. Or some believe it will happen very soon and it will destroy the humanity. So the tools. And the tools are helpful for many things. As with all seniors, A tools are important for retired professors as well. They use them for their own needs, but they can greatly help the seniors in general in expanding their use. That is why we participated in organization of two recent events last September. Some of you may remember we had a Zoom meeting on artificial intelligence apply to seniors 55 plus in the silver economy. The meeting was chaired by uh, Luigi. It was an analytical balance between ethics, technology, and social concerns. Last uh, Jan January, mid-January this year, we had a Zoom meeting AI tool Chat GPT organized by the e seniors network in Slovenia. Our findings are 
then accelerated actions are needed to introduce seniors to the benefits of AI tools. It is necessary to find ways of effective and successful training of seniors on a larger scale. This shows the need for intensifying cross-border cooperation in exchange and exchange of experiences. Seniors 55 plus and especially retired academics can play a prominent role in this. We need acceleration of AI. We don't need a regulation of AI. Point two, the costs. The cost, what does it cost and how much do we have to pay what someone paid invested already. It is important to realize that the current level of availability of AI tools is the result of large investments in AI development in recent years, recent decades. Only the largest technology companies can invest so much. The rest of us are more than observers because we simply do not have comparable resources. It is important that we consider that major investments have been done, and now it's up to us to use the benefits. From the individual perspective, it is good to recognize that a few tech giants have great created great, useful, and considering investment, expensive equipment that is now available for us to use practically at no cost. Use smartly, of course. The sooner, the better. First of all, smaller countries need to rapidly invest in education and promotion of the use of AI tools. What do you think? Is it fair to say that the role of AI tools, as we are starting to understand now, is comparable to what was the role of Internet 20, 30 years ago? At the beginning, it was limited to universities only, research only, after military, United States military allowed us to use it. BitNet was named at that time. Now it's all over. For all people in the world, practically at no cost. Being smart means use it as much as you can. Point three, digitize documents as a prerequisite of the use of AI tools. Digitizing documents provides the foundational infrastructure needed for AI tools to operate effectively. Digitizing documents is a foundational step for small nations looking for harness to harness the full potential of AI tools. The existence of national digital library is important for the accelerated digitization of written materials. For example, digital library of Slovenia. The more materials that are digitized, the better the AI tools answers to questions about that country can be. For example, about cultural heritage, history, social life, science, business, and more. At our workshops, we are talking with the users who started to use Chat Gypsy and or any other tool. And very often they say, Well, I asked a question and they got some stupid answers. They asked the questions about several parts of uh, related to Slovenia. We have to ask ourselves, 
what Slovenia as a country has done to make sure that whatever we have to say, to show, to present, is digitized and accessible. As long as we don't do that, nobody else will do it for us. So digitization of documents of our history, of cultural heritage, is very important. Point four, the libraries. We were closely with the libraries in Slovenia. Uh, libraries are important to seniors, and seniors are important to libraries. AI tools are important to the library visitors. AI can significantly enhance user services in libraries. Libraries can empower seniors to overcome barriers and confidentially engage with AI tools fostering digital literacy and enhancing their overall quality of life. Public libraries can serve as valuable community hubs for seniors to initiate their journey into the world of AI, fostering digital literacy and promoting lifelong learning. And some recommendations that was that I was able to find on the internet recommendations from people who have more experience than I have. Few. We overestimate the effect of technology on the short term and underestimate the effects in the long run. Everything is going to change. But with, this, with things like this, it's more of a process. It takes time to see the implications of that, how we can respond, what changes and what doesn't. Engage with it. Give students a chance to experiment with it. Give them a chance to evaluate it, but then give them the chance to reflect on it. Learning by doing. We cannot expect the acceleration of the in employment of new AI tools to slow down. Nor can we hope for a technological solution in the form of unreliable AI detection of curb it impact. We need to focus instead on developing a sustainable AI literacy for all stakeholders. Being able to communicate the findings and issues across stakeholders and keeping each other accountable becomes more important than ever. Finally, I would agree with what Luigi was suggesting. Let's work together. It's new to all of us. It's important to all of us. And we all can do something good for us and for the others. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. Very nice uh, and uh, very informative uh, the way uh, how digitalization uh, should be, should can have a use for 55 plus. Uh, okay, the next one is Liz Miller uh, with the topic uh, Educating Active Agers, Mastering AI for Independence and Security. Liz, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm here talking about the work that we're doing at Get Set Up. For those of you who don't know, Get Set Up is an online community of older adults who are looking to learn, connect with others, and unlock new life experiences. And so part of what we do is we partner with local entities such as states, local governments, libraries, healthcare providers in order to offer live interactive programming that's taught by peers to their older adult peers and in multiple different languages. We're global, so we have classes around the clock. And of course, one of the things that we are most definitely teaching is about AI and its impact, what it is, how you can utilize it, and also how it can at times sometimes be unfortunately a tool as well for fraud. So making sure that you're aware of it and preventing it. With everything that's happening, I think lots of times with AI, uh, as it was mentioned, it can be very similar to 
the internet in the past, when there's something like this, you don't always have a resource to go to. And so what we try to do is provide empowering education from peers who speak similar um, languages and contexts. And many of our online instructors help to build the internet. So they're also at the forefront of what's going on with all of the new um, and developing AI tools that are out there. So Considering its dual nature, we are working to not only teach kind of generic classes so that our learners can stay informed when their grandkids or friends, relatives come and start to talk about it with classes such as the impact of AI and revolutionizing healthcare for older adults, how it's impacting. Um, there's a number of really wonderful tools that are being used now for healthcare that can help to do monitoring and can help to interact, but people don't know what they are. And often when people don't know something, it comes with a lot of fear. So one of our biggest ideas is really to educate and then to teach people how to utilize it. So how can you utilize chat GPT to perhaps enhance uh, your marketing or create emails. Perhaps you're developing arthritis so it can create a first draft. And really around this idea that, you know, an AI is a tool. So there's positives, there's negatives, just like the internet. The internet is a tool. We know that there's lots of great things on the internet and also lots of not so great things. And you have to go at it with an educated mind um, and knowing how to utilize it to best help impact you. So one of our initiatives this year that we're particularly looking at is really around kind of scams in the AI era, particularly in the US, which is one of our main hubs for where we're working. We have elections this year and with a number of the voice scams that are going out, deep fakes, it's becoming so important to understand, to be able to recognize what tools are being used for AI that can be helpful, whether that's kind of a bot or an AI voice when you call in to talk to your healthcare plan or to return something. Nowadays, I think most of us end up talking to a bot for the first, what, 15 minutes of any phone call to a major company or organization, which isn't always a bad thing. Um, but also, how can we make sure that it's not something that we're falling victim to. One of the big common things right now in the US is a grandparent scam where they can use AI to create voices that sound like a loved one, whether it's a grandchild, a child or something, and somebody calls and they say, help, I need money or something like this, when really the person's going about their regular life. So just kind of putting in tools so that you're preventing um, fake news fraud, um, and just the fear that comes from tools being utilized. What are things you can do to check to make sure, is this happening? Is this not contacting people? What are ways that you can do that to really kind of extend your ideas? And then also how can you utilize tools? So through our classes, we have classes that are more general to more specific, both how to utilize it, how to prevent fraud. And then we also have what we like to call our office hours where you can come, you can ask, one of our leading tech people questions. And what's really unique about our platform around lifelong learning and education is this factor that you're learning from your peers. So lots of times that takes away a lot of the apprehension of learning from someone perhaps younger who may feel it's easier and it can be harder to ask questions and things like that. And so through that, we've partnered extensively with libraries across the US and health plans and things like that to really help provide empowering education because with any new tool, you have to learn how to utilize it most effectively and also to understand where there can be problems. Um, so that's what we're, we're really doing around that. We know that it can help so much with voice technology, um, is helping people who perhaps can no longer have the same dexterity. So whether that's your Alexa doing something for you um, through voice technology, it can really help and empower people as they're aging. It can help to keep people more secure by connecting them with loved ones through networks of connected groups. But people need to know how to utilize these tools and that these tools are often available free of charge with devices they may already have at home. Um, so we're working to do that. Great, thank you, Liz. Nice to hear about mm -hmm. such uh, initiatives or programs. Uh, I think that we are, at least I know in Croatia, we don't have a similar. We have a group of people walking around and presenting the fake news and how to notice the fake news. And they're doing this to the uh, local communities where and do in the place uh, and retired homes. So they go to the older people and try to teach them about the fake news and scams which are available or which are happening online. 
Okay, uh, the next uh, presenter is uh, Dr. Daniel Rebol uh, with the topic uh, Google Board as a co-author in writing an article. Uh, Daniel, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. Well, I would like to share with you one of my latest experiences with using generative artificial intelligence systems. Uh, some three months ago, I got a challenging invitation to write an article for a special edition of the Law and Business Journal on the topic of innovation. It was challenging because innovation is not really my field of expertise. And there is a whole science of innovation that was building up for years now. Uh, however, I had an idea, a case from my field of expertise, uh, which is or one of them, automation of construction progress monitoring, where there are different solutions and they have very different degree of innovation. So this was what I wanted to focus on. But as mentioned, my knowledge of the science of innovation is limited, very limited. So I decided to use BART, which is now Gemini, um, the latest Google conversational generative artificial intelligence chatbot. There were a few questions and answers, while my main question was actually, and I think the easiest would be to show it to you, uh, by simply sharing uh, this part of the screen. I hope you can see it. Uh, so the question was, uh, or, or the request actually, elaborate on the science of innovation. Include examples of scientific breakthroughs that led to innovation. Also include challenges to innovation and include in-text citations and give a reference list at the end and use Chicago citation style. And so very specific. Um, now the answer, well, there were actually, there are always three drafts and you can then also vote uh, which you find the best. And uh, in this way you can help Gemini, Bart at that time, uh, to get better, to improve. So uh, there were really uh, um, good looking answers with the reference list at the end. However, um, after checking the reference list, I could find out that some of them were simply made up. They didn't exist. Such improvisation is known and is called AI hallucination. It can be quite unpleasant to say at least. So it is very important to check answers and improve questions and get somehow to the core or to be really sure that what you get is true. Um, AI systems can help us a lot in gathering, sorting, summarizing information, but we need to have a certain level of knowledge about the field ourselves. Otherwise, the answers can lead us astray. Uh, we never know how a certain AI system gathered knowledge and how it is formed, how it formed its neural network. Even the experts don't know how their own AI systems really work, what, how, how they uh, developed their internal uh, knowledge or, or these networks. Therefore, one should be very, very careful when using artificial intelligence. It is a powerful tool, of course, but we have to be careful. Well, later on, I have, uh, when I, realized that some references were wrong. I have, I, I told Gemini and asked to please check the references again. It seems not all of them were really published. 
And it answered, you're absolutely right, and I apologize, and so on. <laughs> However, the new reference list was also uh, misleading, or some of those uh, references do not exist. AI simply has no consciousness, at least to my knowledge and experience, and it can't really distinguish between good and bad. It, it's simply processed what, what it has got into it, or what it consumed from, from various sources. And then in some way it, it sorts or it organizes this knowledge. However, the question, of course, of consciousness in relation to artificial intelligence is, is a huge challenge, and I wouldn't really go into it. My main intention was to simply share with you this little experience. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Rebol. Yeah, this is true, and uh, I did the same. I tried the same, and I got the same results. Uh, for one of my articles about the silver economy and silver entrepreneurship, I asked uh, the chat GPT uh, to, to give me some examples of the silver entrepreneurs and, and di from Croatia. And I got the names of the people who do exist, but everything behind that was uh, fake. They just collected something and made of uh, made something that uh, these uh, oh sorry that these persons were not doing something, but that was not completely true. So yeah, you have to be in more intelligent than artificial intelligence, and you have to to check everything. Yeah. Okay. Thank you again for for your experience. The last but not least presentation is from Dr. Richard Hackathorn. So Richard, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. By by the way, I've had exactly the same experience <laughs> so it's uh, it's chat gbt it's most of the large language models that uh, do have this propensity to hallucinate or just you know if they uh, don't know something kind of make something up uh, there, there is a way of tempering that and uh, uh, in both the uh, the text prompts and in the python uh, API calls where you can set the temperature down to zero and uh, they they do a better job uh, uh, checking. But uh, Gemini should, because they're from Google, uh, have accurate references. I, you know, there's no excuse on that. So um, anyway, good, good observation. Well, I feel like I'm among some colleagues here. I, I'm quite honored to uh, um, uh, talk to you, um, um, uh, Michael Ginsberg, uh, my longtime colleague here, uh, uh, told me about the group and said, you know, maybe you ought to attend. And so I delve in and, and found a little bit about uh, uh, the group here. And I was thinking, you know, I got an idea. Um, you know, it may not fit. Uh, it may be a little crazy. But um, it's uh, kind of exploring uh, the possibility of a, a mentoring uh, plot. Um, this group has, uh, uh, you know, decades of experience in terms of teaching and research, and it, it uh, seems to me that uh, the more we can do to bring that. In a, a very rich experience together uh, using some of the new AI assisted tools uh, would have great value. Um, I, I assume that uh, a, a lot of you are still maintaining uh, strong ties with your uh, both your local university and with uh, colleagues throughout the world that you have done research to maybe colleagues that have been your doctoral students in the past uh, decades. Um, and it would be nice to sort of uh, capture not just your the, the substance that you've um, uh, done research on over these decades, but also some of the intuitions. And uh, so I'm thinking of a, a kind of a 
stereotype situation where a doctoral student comes into your office and says, you know, I, I need to really get serious about my doctoral dissertation. Um, and I've got some ideas, some of them, you know, are sort of uh, uh, related to some of the past research you've done. Um, you know, can we discuss this and so forth? So this is kind of a mentoring situation that I think, uh, you know, all of us uh, have, uh, have experienced over uh, our academic uh, uh, lifetimes. And um, how do we capture that kind of, um, uh, of, of shall we say, a dial or conversation as opposed to just simply lecturing? So I came up with this term, I don't particularly like it all that much, called living textbook. But uh, the notion here uh, that I'm trying to get to is that we, we can teach our area of expertise, our area of research, but can we mentor it? Uh, and can we use some of the new tools to help us sort of convey not, not also the, the objective facts of our research, but also the, some of the intuition about that research. And I think we're getting close um, to having some, some of the technology that could help us here. And uh, it, it, it seemed to me that, boy, if we could get a couple of us sort of trying to do some small prototypes, um, you know, we can kind of explore this and see if we can leverage it into a, a greater audience. Um, so that's, that's kind of in essence, uh, this concept of a living um, textbook. Uh, I think it would be especially um, exciting and of value <clears throat> if you have an established research team. That is, you actually have set up a center at your universities, you've got staff on board, you've got a you know, multi-year funding coming in for the research, uh, uh, you've got doctoral students that, uh, or and even postdoc students that you may be supporting to, to do the research. And uh, um, it would be nice uh, if we had the tools for you to sort of bring together you know, the 30 years or more of expertise and be able to share that while you're still around and maybe to some extent when you're, when we pass on. Um, so that's the kind of the, the notion here. Now, so what am I talking about? Uh, it, it seems like most of you have uh, played with, uh, um, with ChatGBT and now uh, at Gemini, and by the way, there's going to be much more. We live on interesting times. These are not normal technology evolution um, that we've been accustomed to in the information technology area for the, you know, for the last few decades. 14 months ago, um, our, our colleagues at OpenAI um, release this uh, uh, development uh, prototype to get some feedback on and it went viral and the rest is history. <laughs> so we, we're all playing around and being guinea pigs uh, to their research project um, when we use ChatGPT. Um, a couple of months ago they put an extension on it uh, which uh, sort of went over the heads, I think, of most people. Um, and that's called Custom GPT Builder. And uh, that's only available for people that uh, pay the extra uh, $20 US per month for the, the pro subscription. But um, uh, so when it came out, I started using this. It allows you to actually do some of the things that um, a, a Python API developers assume are there. See, what happened with ChatGPT 
they, they took a lot of uh, Python code and put a nice user interface over the top of it. And, um, um, you know, for most of the last year, that, that interface was sort of bolted down. Uh, we couldn't actually penetrate beneath the, you know, the, the prompt response uh, conversation we would have with ChatGPT. But uh, with this new little builder, GPT builder here, uh, we're able to go in and actually set some of these parameters like, like temperature and the like uh, a little bit more. Uh, the, when I first looked at it, I thought, yeah, give me the Python. You know, I want to <laughs> I, I see what's happening. I want to have more control, you know. But not all of us are, are at ease with doing Python coding. Um, so this allows a much greater audience. And as I worked with it, I realized that uh, in some ways it, um, it allows us to go a little deeper. We're able to uh, uh, express in, in natural language, I think, thoughts that are a little deeper and that will sort of change the style of the conversation we're having. And as I said earlier, what the style that I'd like to get to is more of a mentoring style than just a question answering style. Uh, mentoring in the sense of, you know, kind of walking through a chain of thought uh, um, sequence with a mentor E and, you know, quizzing them and challenging them and sharing some of the intuitions that you've had and things like that. You know, that's another whole level, I think, in, of richness in the conversation. So, so far, I've just been waving my hands <laughs> here. So what do we do about it? Uh, well, I was thinking if we get together a study group um, of some people that don't mind, you know, uh, getting their hands dirty, and actually doing a little uh, prototyping. Um, and it's essentially, you're doing programming, but instead of using Python, you're using English. Um, and, um, uh, but it's a structured and stylized uh, English. Uh, this is sort of what people have been referring to the last uh, few years as prompt engineering, but within a the particular context that open AI has, uh, <clears throat> has given to us here. Now, the other interesting thing about this is that everybody else is jumping on the bandwagon. And in just the last few months, uh, uh, the Gemini people have announced intentions that they're going to have something similar to this. And the uh, Hugging Face, which is a very interesting company that's more in the open source area. And believe it or not, open AI is not open source. So <laughs> that's another little I gotcha about uh, our craziness period of, of AI. Um, but anyway, there, there will be the opportunity that we can have um, uh, open source um, and, and hopefully control types of tools to do this type of work in the future. And I'm, I guess, the, let me set expectations right here. I don't know, I, I certainly don't expect to get something useful out of this study group or this effort here, uh, but we will learn something. I can guarantee that. Uh, what we learn will be surprising. I can guarantee that. Um, I've, I've had that uh, several times in my own dabbling, um, and it will take a year or two before things settle down and we can, you know, reliably scale up to, to something that, that uh, 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 an organization can um, adopt and is a stable part of their normal operations. We're not there yet. Uh, so that, uh, and I put together a, uh, a, a 
little one pager here. And let me just real quick, I should have put this in the chat channel. And I assume, Jose, that you'll, this is a uh, link to this one page. And uh, I think this that was is email my this email. Excuse me? I think that was in the email Jose sent out this morning. Oh, okay. Okay. So that you already have it. And this Not is my uh, just me, email. Just to make sure. Only the presenters got the, your paper. Uh, Inform okay. them that you will be participating in the program. After the meeting, Sorry. most probably tomorrow, your paper will be published uh, along with the program, as all the others are. So okay. it will be available. So far, it's not yet there. And your uh, oral uh, presentation is very valuable because, as I understood, reading your proposal is, guys, let's do something together. That's a good summary. And I'll end with that. Thank you, Richard. OK, this was the last uh, presentation for or presenter, let's put it this way, presenter for today. Now I, I am opening the discussion. So anyone who might have something, please raise your hand or just go. May I, <clears throat> may I speak? Yeah, yeah, just go ahead. Okay. Um, so it's um, what emerges from the... Uh, all the 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 speaks uh, by the presence is that uh, uh, oh our society is, uh, is developing in a wrong way with why because uh, generally when we speak about uh, a system about uh, a multitude what we imagine is that in this multitude, there is a central component, very large, with mean values, and the two extremities with the very different values characterizing. So what we see now is that our societies over all the world are developing in the wrong way because we have that the component, the central component, the mean component is going to decrease while we have the extremities increasing. So we have very rich and very poor, very industrialized, and not uh, 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 industrial, very demographically developed and absolutely demographically reducing, very expert in technologies and absolutely not educated to them. So if we see to this, the fear is that uh, artificial intelligence becomes a further field where society becomes polarized with the two extremities developing at the image of the central, of the theoretically prevailing component. And this is more dangerous if, according to what said before, uh, something of the speaker that I thank for the presence here, is uh, this danger is uh, more relevant if we don't see only behind artificial intelligence a service 
but also a scientific content. Because in this case, the difference between educated and not educated, teach it and not teach it, scientifically advanced and scientifically delayed, becomes this difference becomes stronger. And so polarization of society becomes stronger. And this is not in the direction of a, a more right society, but a society where the difference are still present and the, the tentative, the efforts to reduce them always more difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Dre, go ahead. Just please unmute. You need to unmute. You uh, can you unmute, please, Mr. Dreyer? Please unmute. <laughs> we don't hear you. Hello, we don't hear you. You're muted. Press the unmute button, bottom left. <laughs> Now okay, now, you got it now? Yeah. Okay, sorry, so I'll, I'll just start again. Uh, very interesting uh, presentations, thank you. Now, um, it, it, uh, the key for me is the use of the AI. Uh, just presently, I'm reviewing a, an article for a journal, and I'm just wondering in my third reading of it i'm just wondering whether this whole thing hasn't been generated by ai <laughs> it, it looks and 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 reads when, unless you read it deeply it's just like richard was showing us it looks terrific the words are all there and so on and and if you don't look at the articles or the the, the articles that are referenced you, you think oh that sounds reasonable you know i know a few names there and so on. but look all of it potentially all of it's bullshit or a uh, more polite term, sorry, humbug. Bull bullshit is the quintessentially Australian one, I think. <laughs> uh, so so um, I wonder whether um, as part of the education that, say, Liz explained and that we're all concerned with, what we should be concerned with also or should include in that is making sure that people who want to use AI have a good understanding of its foundation. Where did it come from? Look, fundamentally, it comes from zeros and ones, just like all the programming languages and whatever. And it's not possible for those sorts of things to produce stuff that our brains do. It just is not possible. So my rule of thumb, I think, is going to be, unless you can advise me otherwise, my rule of thumb is going to be when I use AI, I'm going to treat it as data. And then it can find things that probably I can't and much quicker, but I will use that as data points and then I'll go and verify all those things and put it together for myself. So I, I, I wonder whether that's a, a reasonable approach to be suggesting to all people. Daniel? Well, I believe that, uh, yes, as, as you mentioned, uh, AI can work faster and can uh, and has access to much more information than any of us can in whole, our whole lives. Um, but I also think it can actually generate um, some kind of new knowledge uh, to compose something that has not been there yet because it can combine information and generate something it, it is called generative uh, a generative system actually um although yeah. it doesn't know what it does yes, ai has no consciousness and and it would be hard to persuade me that it that it has 
Some people say it does have consciousness. consciousness. Um, on the other hand, yes, uh, I very much agree with Luigi that uh, this technology will, without any intervention, further divide the world and and uh, the extremes will get only bigger than there already are. And uh, I once discussed this question with Chad GPT. Uh, how would it solve the problem of this inequality? And it was very clear. Uh, taxes for the rich ones and so on. So very socialistic answers. And I can only agree with it. However, uh, when it comes to, to the next question, how should we do this? Um, yeah, law and this and that. But <laughs> so it, it, it became a kind of a loop. Um, it, there was no really um, new answer to this question or, or some breakthrough answer. It was something that we all know but that we are simply not or not yet able to do. And so, I'll stop here. Da da Daniel, uh, can, I, can I just ask there, you said, yes, it can generate. Um, would you permit me to say it can regenerate? Or, to put it another way, can this AI do conceptual generation? Uh, uh, generation can it generate concepts new ones like people can well it certainly can uh, create something that has not yet been done so it can combine information into a new form of information or knowledge if uh, since it is it is a kind of a new insight I just I'm not such an expert. I, I wouldn't know how how far this can go at the moment. But um, I think it will it, it it does develop very fast, and I'm just wondering how far it will come. Uh, I'm quite a fan of science fiction, actually, and uh, science fiction writers actually. Um, always um, experience or or they actually uh, their books are kind of labs where they're experiment with possible futures uh, with the possible use of technologies and so on um, I'm a big fan of Asimo who really did this in, in a wonderful manner way but where is here the the real possible reach of AI and how far it can come? I really don't know. Can I add something? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Liz, then Michael, then you're there. Um, I, I think both these points are really interesting. The idea around thinking of it as just data, we tend to think about it as we're using it as an assistant. So kind of like perhaps an intern who maybe doesn't know a lot of things. So you need to check a lot of the information, go over it and add to it. Um, but to this idea of kind of generating, I think the idea that it has all the knowledge that can put things together, um, one of the ways that one of my colleagues uses it, which is kind of fun to kind of give the, an example of it, is when he doesn't have an idea of what to cook based on the ingredients in his fridge, he asks mm -hmm. ChatGPT, what can I make? I've got two tomatoes, uh, an onion and something like this. And to that extent, it kind of does create a new recipe in the sense of it takes all, all of the recipes in the world and puts it together for what will work with the ingredients that he has. So I think that this idea of like reorganizing to create is something powerful that AI can definitely do. I think where it's lacking in the sense that it is just data is it doesn't consciously think about, will that taste good? <laughs> will that be something you actually want to eat? <laughs> yeah. um, and so that's where it comes in that there will, in many ways, I think always need to be a human editor touch, looking at things to see how it actually applies to the human condition. 
but in in some ways I think it does a little bit of kind of both it is just data but it's got all the data so it can kind of create these new interesting and unique things that maybe even just spurts a person's creativity a little bit more to 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 do something faster than perhaps they would have done on their own just staring into the fridge looking at a tomato and some onions perhaps <laughs> Michael yeah so I have a question which I, I think relates to this question of generation and going back to the uh, the references that that uh, are that do not exist uh, I have made I, I assume that it is not chat GPT or Gemini or whatever hallucinating but that it has found that reference out there somewhere and it is not creating it itself uh, and I don't know whether uh, anyone can Dick do you have an answer to that you're I yes. know you play with this a lot Yes, uh, actually, uh, Gemini had the answer itself. It it uh, did confirm that some references were not non-existent. So, <laughs> so it, it so Gemini actually created them. Uh, yeah, made them up. It didn't find. Oh, okay. No, they were yeah, not. I, I was basing this on, on on the experience that I have is that that uh, Amazon for a long time. Uh, said that a book that uh, a colleague Gadaryev and I wrote was out of print. Well, in fact, it had never been in print. Um, and uh, so we, we've always thought that we would release it for the first time in the second edition. But people referred to the book, which has never existed. And, and um, so there's, there's an awful lot out there to be found if you look far enough. <laughs> Well, in this case, it, it did not uh, exist. And, and Gemini apologized for making it up. <laughs> OK. May I, I like the idea that we would stick to the word data. Would you remember 30 years ago when the term information systems uh, mm. appeared in the university programs, and it was clear that information systems is more than data processing. At that time, I remember serious books used as serious textbooks at various universities, and there was a message in the book. Information is everything what is produced by computer. Whatever you get on the printer, it's information. Data in, information out. Are we in a similar situation now? We get data based on data. And the benefit is that a system like any tool we are talking about has access to more data than we have, can combine faster than we can, but then it's still data, what we get. And I like the example Liz gave. It can formulate an idea about what you can do and cook, uh, and no way to uh, explain whether you like it or not. So here is the difference that we sticking to data will be stay, sticking to a, a firm ground. May, may I say? say something about this. Uh, according to me, we have to, to make a difference between uh, information and knowledge. Are two concepts sometimes confused, but are quite different. Uh, really, we have three levels of education. N information, knowledge and culture. What we risk, according what we, we said tonight, as the artificial intelligence produce information for many, but knowledge and culture for few. So the polarization about which I spoke before is a, as another element 
that is uh, how artificial intelligence impact on the life of the communities. And uh, this difference is quite important because how the, does uh, an uh, artificial intelligence work? by the data that we put inside it in order that we educate it. And it is able to work starting from our data to produce other information and maybe also knowledge when it is necessary a computing ability not human. So the risk is that uh, by using artificial intelligence in an improper way, we increase the difference between technologically poor and technological rich. And uh, we don't increase the knowledge, the total knowledge content of the world but only of a part of it. And this must be uh, absolutely not accepted. This is the reason why the use of these new technologies needs a proper use that arrives both by laws, by rules, but also by ethics. Daniel, yeah. Uh, this is the problem, how to build ethics into, into AI. Um, and this has to do with, with the basic good and wrong, which we humans learn by observing. Uh, children or babies process data and build a model of the world in their brains. And this model, of course, expands and expands. And then according to new input, it forms into, well, a human. And it is, of course, very depending on the cultural background and, and cultural environment, what they will see as good and what they will see as bad the same thing is with with ai it will learn by or learn is maybe not the right uh, term yet but it will build its neural networks according to uh, data but this data also has a context which means a meaning which means it is information so data with meaning is information. And uh, information with further context and, and if it can be used for, for some decision making is knowledge. At least it's a simplification, I agree, but, but these are the levels uh, of, of, uh, of data, information, knowledge, and, and so on. And um, this is possible in humans because we are conscious beings. Computers are not. So they will behave only according to, to their models of the world. And then they can, could become very evil. And there was an experiment Microsoft did a few years ago. And... Uh, let uh, some of their the early AIs into, uh, I think, Twitter or, or some of these uh, social network uh, uh, systems. And it became very fascistic over a f just a few days. It, it totally got mad. Uh, and they, of course, shut it off immediately. Uh, so, it is very important how AI is being educated. And <laughs> again, I'm not an expert, but I, I, my intuition would be that, that some kind of, of 
ethics will have to be built in. Um, Asimov made it this very easy with his three laws of robotics which of course are a very simplified uh, way of doing this and it wouldn't really work in, in the real world, but uh, something like this would be needed. Um, another point of course is who can use AI and to what level. Uh, a, a metaphor to this might be if we would put uh, an exact plan of how to build, I don't know, um, a car to uh, some medieval whoever, uh, king or whoever, or, or, or scholar from, the, uh, from, from, from that time, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't help him at, at, I mean, he wouldn't understand it. He could find no use of it. And this is what Luigi, uh, you mentioned, that some people will be able, again, to make use of it, and some will not. And this might divide us further, especially if, or as long as AI is not yet, has not yet a, a, an ethics built in, it can be very dangerous and misleading and it could do a lot of harm to people who would blankly believe whatever answer they get. Well, I'll, I'll rather stop here because <laughs> it, it could be a huge discussion, of course. Someone else? If if not, if not, I would recommend to all of you uh, to write what you said, because my dream, uh, just a dream, but anyway, dream uh, have their meaning, is that we edit as a group a sort of syllabus about artificial intelligence that can be used by anyone who want to enter this field, want to be an educator about this field, want to discuss in some conference or congress, to have a, a sort of reference that can be agreed or not agreed. But anyway, that puts the problems about uh, the subject, about the, the topic. So as uh, I have seen that many, that all of us had sent something of creative, of important, for which uh, becomes nearer to this field. Because we are speaking today but uh, hearing to what we said, it's easy to understand that, that we speak about something that we know, maybe in a wrong way, maybe in a right way, but we know what we are uh, speaking about. Sometime about artificial intelligence, you hear from people that speak about something that they don't know what is. They think that is a, a, a computer or something like this without seeing the many complex problems about it. So if we can edit a syllabus about this, we can make something of useful. And this is for people of science, it's very important to be useful to the society where they live. Ethics means science of behavior. And one of the points of our behavior must be to be in contact with the other generations. So if we can leave just something of our reflection, maybe we, we can do something useful. So 
if it's possible. I understand that sometimes there is no time, sometimes you're not really willing, but uh, if you can write, I I'll do for my part, uh, unifying what I already written and it's already published, what is said today in addition. But if all our six were today, um, put right, written what we said, and we collect what other people not present today, but that in, in the past with Joseph and me were able to interact. Maybe we can arrive to something of publishing that can be useful. I think this session is being recorded. So if we can get access to the recording. Yeah, of course. Um, it would be very useful. Uh, I, I, I think I, I will join. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. I will be uh, preparing the recording and send it to Jorge latest tomorrow. And then Jorge will upload it to the YouTube channel of the, of the Emerita Professor Network. It is my understanding that besides what Vicky is suggesting, you will receive as a attachment to the program what Dick Hackathon presented today, which is an invitation to an action. Uh, you are invited to read that and in case you agree or would like to join, just contact uh, Dick directly and he will run the group. My understanding was, was that you would come up with a certain text of, as a result sometime in May. Is it correct? Please. Yes. Um, yes. In How would you like to proceed? Yeah, I, I think that within uh, a week or so, I think each, each of the people that might be interested could actually try out the uh, little little experiments um, in this area. So um, I think I, I think the first few steps are fairly easy. And uh, as I said, uh, you don't have to know Python uh, for this. And uh, but you have to have some pretty precise uh, English. Something more, anyone more? May we invite Michael Ginsberg? Michael, uh, you said you would plan uh, for a meeting in April. Uh, the topic you suggested, please explain briefly. The date is not defined, but usually we have in the mid of a month. Uh, it's usually Wednesday. Timing is 17 to 19 uh, Central European time, and then it depends where you live to accommodate. But we would like to have uh, the proposal and the presenters as soon as possible. Uh, the floor is yours, Michael. What are you planning to do for the April meeting? Uh, so, uh... Let's make this a question as to whether this is a topic people would be interested in. Um, I've spent, I, I officially retired four years ago and uh, have been uh, probably busier than I was when I worked full time ever since. Um, and in looking at, at the education system, certainly higher education in the United States, there are just tremendous problems. Uh, and uh, I have been looking at what what can be done to alleviate some of those those problems, and and they're not just in the in higher education, and and not, I don't think just in the U.S. Um, I have been working in a variety of different ways and uh, on issues related to, to higher education primarily, 
Uh, and so the, the, the topic is what can we uh, professors emeriti do to, to, to support and improve the education system wherever we are. Um, I could, what I would propose to do is I would present my view of what the problem is and say a little bit about what I've been doing, uh, but, I, but I don't know whether it is of interest uh, and whether others can contribute. I, I had invited one person to, uh, to speak with me at that, uh, in that session. Uh, he, he's on this call, Richard. Uh, and um, I wonder whether others would be interested. Maybe uh, Josie, if we could, if we could, maybe take a poll to see if if there are those who could who who would like to speak. Because I, I don't I do not have a, a series of presenters in mind. What we would do is what we have learned in the last two years, based on your text. Uh, let's say one, maximum two pages, uh, we would inform all members of the group uh, about the idea of the April meeting. And then those having interest will contact you and then you will arrange for the group. What we would like to have is to have perspectives from Europe, United States, Canada, maybe Australia, to open up as big picture as we can. And on the other hand, what we like to do is publish the list of those who have interest who attend the meeting. What we have learned four years ago, and was the reason that we initiated this Professors Emeriti Network was that we had no contacts with our colleagues in the country. Our country is small, uh, two million only, and we knew nothing about ourselves because people retiring, they disappear. They disappear from the radar of university. They don't have their own website. They don't exist anymore. What a pity. And what a shame. So creating the list of those who have interest in one or another topic is uh, something of help. Maybe we would engage Luigi to show us another aspect of what we have learned in the last three years. In 2021, we started to prepare a joint paper for the European Association of Professor Emeriti, which was uh, a year later in Naples, in Italy. Luigi, how would you evaluate our group of six, seven people in six countries working together on a paper? What have we learned? Yes. No, no voice. Um, Sorry, uh, briefly explain how you saw what was going on and what were the results, what was created as a paper and as our community, our group, because maybe new groups are uh, emerging. One proposed, <laughs> proposed, uh, proposed by Dick, one that will be assembly of uh, what we are discussing today and will be sent to Luigi. Groups are important. Luigi, what would you say? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the, the, the starting point was we have many associations, groups, seminars about the state of third age, expressing especially by professors, by researchers, by emeriti, but not only them. So why not to try to collect all these groups 
so increasing the strength of impacting the policy uh, power and especially the organization and the management of our countries. So for, for example, we studied the situation of the ministers of third age. You know, it is in only six countries who have a minister of third age. In Italy, it was pro proposed in the uh, one year before, but it was not accepted. So this is why the strength of the groups able to ask for it for him were not so was not so powerful. So collecting together and joining the different associations in one reality that we call network. But obviously it means only the willing to be together. After this starting point, we began to consider the point, the more important point that we individuated in the silver economy, circular economy, and artificial intelligence. Three points are fundamental because silver economy is the economy of our of the component of the population nearer to us circular economy is a variation of the model of economy that must con consider that the mean age of population is increasing and so so also the opportunities of circular economy changed from the moment it was thought, it was considered as a possible development of economy. And third, artificial intelligence about which we wrote and discussed till today. So as you see, it, it, it started a sort of a syllabus of third age, where the problems of our age in the uh, cultured component, but also in the normal component, in the civil component, because uh, we are uh, to think, we have to think that uh, the component of the age induces to a variation of the management of a society that cannot be based on excellence of mind, but, but is based on the mean civil state. This is what we said till we have said and, and done till today. Your contributions can help all together to increase. If you have to uh, to add something, Joseph, I hope to have me uh, faithful about our past. Well, this is exactly what you have said. On one hand, working together, we can learn from each other and share ideas and experience. In the case of promoting the idea of Minister of Seniors, it was an initiative which was published, and we at least can say we have an idea which is based on experience in several countries. It's not, you know, a joke. It's serious. And now it's up to the government to pre to show up how serious are they. Uh, it will take time, but we not talk. We would not talk about the 
uh, Minister of Serious, who will? <laughs> Our children? <laughs> no, no, they won't. And it's about uh, creating the power of the group, which you mentioned. And uh, one more point, perhaps, you stressed the, uh, the word network. We are not an association. We have no peace. We have no management. Uh, the pre-managers here, managers uh, today, one is Luigi, one is Alexander, one is me. We, we have putting meetings together. This is all what we can do. But you, look where I'm coming from. You can bring many things to the group and share ideas of the group in your own environment. Uh, let's be smart using technology for that. This is why we are using uh, a saying uh, along with the title, uh, we walk what we talk. We talk about artificial intelligence and as Dick is saying, let's experiment that. Let's try. Let's learn for the others. Right. Someone else. So I believe that we said all what we have for today. We have some uh, interesting ideas and uh, things to get uh, back to into the future. Uh, I don't know if I am the one who should say now it's enough or not. Uh, since there is no more, no one is uh, raising hand for the discussion. Uh, I think that maybe we have exhausted all for today. Uh, as I wrote uh, and said that uh, recording will be sent to Joze uh, tomorrow latest, and then uh, it will be posted on YouTube channel of the Professor Emeriti Network. So subscribe to YouTube channel and uh, watch the recording if you missed something. Uh, and uh, basically, I'm looking forward to see you all in the next meeting and uh, as soon as uh, I get the information when the meeting will be on I'll create the zoom link and then we will start sharing the zoom link okay guys thank you very much everybody thank, thank you, you. and uh, see you soon good to see you all bye bye bye, bye.